Yeah. Hello, my name is Benjamin Joel Calloway, and I'm here with my partner speaking today, Theodore Crescenzi, on the characterization of bacteria living in acid mine drainage in Pennsylvania. This presentation is using research that we found in our molecular biology lab at California University of Pennsylvania. I'll let my partner begin this presentation with the introduction. Thank you. Abandoned mine drainage, AMD, is polluting watersheds across the world and can affect agriculture, drinking water purity, wildlife habitats, and recreational activity. The abundance of abandoned coal mines in Pennsylvania poses a particularly large issue with pollution. Passive remediation systems can be used to treat AMD by cleaning out water pollutants. Different bacteria can positively or negatively impact the effects of these passive treatment systems, depending on their metabolism and other factors. Knowing what types of bacteria are growing in these AMD passive remediation systems is quite important. Samples collected from the re remediation sites were used to isolate and purify bacteria. Then DNA was extracted from four isolates, shotgun sequencing was performed, and the genomes of the selected isolates were analyzed to determine their phylogenetic readiness and met met uh, metabolic potential. By performing full genome sequencing of bacteria that live in AMD, we can learn how they impact passive remediation systems and what that could mean. I will now go on to explain the materials and methods that were utilized in this experiment. The first thing that was done was we took a sample of AMD and utilized serial dilution to a factor of 10 to the negative fifth and then incubated this for a week. This was of course followed up by performing streak plates to isolate single colonies. In order to do this, we utilize the 10 to the negative three and 10 to the negative two dilution plates because they had the most easily accessible growth. DNA extract, moving on to DNA extraction. We need to extract the DNA from the purified isolates. In order to do this, cell lysis was induced. Then the DNA was separated, precipitated, washed, and then resuspended. Polymerase chain reaction was utilized to amplify this extracted DNA, after which qubit readings were also performed. Gel electrophoresis was the next step in order to analyze our isolated and amplified DNA. The gel was prepared using TAE agarose ethidium bromide, and it was analyzed using both voltage and a UV light source. After this, the samples were sent into KBase, a system that can analyze the metabolic pathways of a sample. Moving on, my partner Ben will explain the results. Thank you. I'll first begin our results with the results of the serial dilutions. Each factor of serial dilutions showed growth. Shown in the image down underneath the text, the 10 to 4 dilution plate showed the least amount of growth compared to the rest. When we moved on to make our streak plates using col single colonies from the 10 to 3 and 10 to 2 serial dilution plates, both streak plates were observed to have sufficient growth for future use. The isolate grown on the 10 to negative 2 plate had a yellow coloration, and the isolate grown on the 10 to negative 3 plate had a milky coloration, as shown in the image. When we performed our DNA extraction and PCR experiments, Unshown on the left was the result of our extracted DNA, 10 to 3 being on the left and the 10 to 2 labeled on the right. The qubit readings of the extracted DNA resulted in negative 3 isolate equaled 
0.58 micrograms per ml to 1.45, and the 10 to negative 2 isolate equaled 0.78 micrograms per ml, which turned into 1.95. Shown on the right of those numbers is the amplified DNA of, an, of the isolate 10 to negative 3. Afterwards, using gel electrophoresis to ensure the presence of our amplified DNA of isolates, we can see on the right image, without the UV light, it's hard to tell where the DNA actually was amplified or if it was in presence. But when exposed to the UV light on the left side, within the green box are being our isolates, we can confirm the presence of the DNA. For genome annotations, we annotated the isolate from the dilution factor of 10 to negative 2, renaming it as BC2, using K-base. After analyzing the DNA sequences, the closest match to a genome of an already known species was Bacillus pumilus, and it was eventually confirmed as the same organism after blasting the 16S gene. The metabolic pathways of glycolysis and sulfur were complete within this organism. If you're looking at the images down below, the larger of the pathways on the far right can be identified as complete with the blue squares for each of the genes it has. Whereas the complete uh, sulfur metabolic pathway can be in the scene in the second half of the image in the middle. The incomplete pathway of nitrogen uh, was also present in the image down below. Certain genes were identified for antibiotic resistance and metal resistance in the image in the uh, top left. Whereas the actual indicated species of bacteria closest to the isolate genome is in the bottom left image. Using these results, I will now discuss the impacts that this specific organism's metabolisms has on passive remediation systems. The procedures performed on the bacteria isolated from AMD samples was done to learn more about the impacts that microbes may have on the passive remediation of water polluted from abandoned mine drainage. The genome analysis of the selected isolate bacteria revealed its capabilities to metabolize sulfur and glucose and to resist various metals and antibiotics. The identification of sulfur metabolism capabilities are notable due to the use of sulfur reducing bacteria in the treatment of AMD. Bacteria with these sulfate reducing abilities can lower the pH of a system by reducing sulfate present in the AMD water through the production of less acidic byproducts. Down in the image below, this is the image of a, a passive remediation plant. And it's, as you can see, its primary contaminants are aluminum, iron, and sulfate, with a, causing a low pH of about three. Sulfate being in high amounts, you can see that has a bigger impact on the system, which is why the sulfur reducing capabilities can be so important. The reduction of sulfate also increases the pH of the system. Learning from these results, hypothesis is pertaining to the role that the isolate BC2 and other related organisms that have that uh, have the passive remediation systems of AMD can be made and explored in future experiments. If you're interested in this topic, you could use the references in the bottom right corner to learn more about the background information and the protocols that we follow down below. We'd like to thank you for your time and listening to our presentation and have a nice day.